today we're back at one of my favorite places to be, especially in the summertime. We're at Pond Pro down in Shawnee, and joining us is Mike Miller, who is the pond expert. And Mike, we want to talk a little bit today about um, pondless waterfalls uh, and why somebody might look at doing those and some of the factors to consider. We've got one right okay. here that we can take a look at. This is the first one in our yard, Casey. And we call them disappearing waterfalls, we call them pondless waterfalls. Okay. And what that m simply means is that we've got a waterfall and a stream, but there's no pond at the bottom. Excellent. So <laughs> what, what goes into this? What do we need to consider well, um, as at, far as the size and the flow and that sort of stuff? At the top of each waterfall, we're going to have what we call a weir, W-E-I-R. Okay. And that's simply an opening for the waterfall for the water to come out of and start. And that's really the beginning point of the waterfall. And then as it comes down at the bottom, we have a big basin that we've dug in the ground. Mm -hmm. We fill it up with a plastic box. It looks kind of like a big egg crate or milk, milk carton that's, that only displaces 5% of the water. Okay. So we can make that vault smaller and still contain as much water as we need. So it holds the water, but yet it's able to hold the rocks That's up right. above those, as well. Okay. Those plastic boxes are very strong. They'll okay. hold up to 15,000 pounds. Okay. So uh, there's no fear of somebody walking across this and falling in. Oh, okay. It, it's not going to happen. Then we've got uh, all of the rocks on top of it, but if we needed to service our pump, which is down in there, we could get to the pump, service it, clean it, or change it out if it goes out. And that's the only really mechanical part on all of this. And the pipe comes around and pumps the water back up to the top. Okay. So a couple of things you need to consider is how large does the basin need to be. And we, we've determined that three times the volume of water in your stream is sufficient to fill up the pipe fill up the stream and allow it to flow down and fall back into the basin and still leave enough to cover the pump. Okay. And that's the important consideration, is that we've got to have enough water in there to cover that pump or the electronics that are at the top are going to eventually heat up and turn off. Right. And now you've got to replace the pump. And, and that's the expensive part. I, and I would imagine you get different sounds with the, oh, yeah. whether it's a lazy creek or a a tall waterfall. Water only makes three sounds. One is water falling into water and that's the deepest and loudest sound that it okay. makes. The next one is water falling onto rocks and that's a splashing sound. That's a little less low, it's a little higher pitched and that's where the splash sound comes from that we all are familiar with. Uh -huh. And then the last one is water running across rocks. And that is the least amount of sound. Okay. We think that you should design your waterfall to have all three of those sounds. Otherwise, your brain is going to block it out as white noise. Okay. And as we're standing here, I mean, you've got a nice flow. I, I notice the water is being diverted in different directions. How do you do that? Is that just a matter of putting the rocks in there? It, I'm sure it's, it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> well, no, it really is pretty simple, okay. but you have to understand what happens. Water only changes directions for one of two reasons. One is an immovable object, like one of those big rocks, uh -huh. and two is a change in elevation. Oh, okay. If I change the size. Yeah. Let me show you yeah. what I'm talking about. So here we've set the weir at an angle, assuming that our, our point of perspective is over here. That's where most people who come in this gate are going to first see this waterfall. So that's the perspective we want. We want to see the water coming out as it goes down. But we didn't want just a wide, 36 inch wide flow of water coming out, so we put this big rock here. And this rock makes it channel here. Narrower water gets deeper. Wider water gets shallower. We've got more water over here on the side on this side over here and then that was too much flow coming down here so we set this big rock in its place we laid this old dead tree down it's got to turn and go this way because not only did I put an immovable object there but I raised the elevation too so that it comes this way now here's a simple way to fill in a lot of space all along your waterfall simply by raising the rubber liner up 
and poking dirt underneath it so that you've changed the height here and the water is forced to go this way and not flow out here okay. into the yard. So then the rest of these rocks we pretty much added just to add interest to it, where if you make water wide, remember it's shallower and it appears to be slower, it's moving at the same volume. But if I pinch it together between these two rocks, then it is deeper and it looks to be faster. So it kind of makes rapids, if you will. That's right, the, yeah. white water rapids. Yeah. And, and we've got a, our largest one shows that where you can narrow it down and it really turns up some white water as you go through. I'm going to try and get out of here without falling in. So when we get down here to the bottom where the reservoir is, uh, how do you make it just not fall into the reservoir? Well, that's a magic, and normally I make folks come to class to learn the magic, but I'll give you the secret today. Oh, okay, today. just me, right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nobody else can hear this. So, if you, you're right that the water would come down, follow the liner, and fall into the pit, the basin, right there at uh -huh. the edge, right along there, and then it would fill up the basin, and the pump would get it and start over again. But meanwhile, these rocks are all dry, right. so you don't have a disappearing waterfall, what you have is a waterfall and stream with a pond of dry rocks at the bottom. Right, because the water would fall right that, into that the basin. That doesn't look very yeah. good, we don't think. So what we do is use a scrap piece of the rubber liner that goes underneath. We start right up here at the top, somewhere in here above the basin, and lay it down on the rubber, cover it with rocks, and let it come down across those plastic boxes we talked about, mm -hmm. down into here, and then we cover the whole thing with rocks so you can't see any of it. And it so doesn't matter where that plastic ends or? I don't care. And it's not adhered some to anything? Some of it comes clear here. Some okay. of it again runs out there. This runs out over here. Okay. There's still vault underneath here. Okay. But no water's getting in it. That's right. okay. I don't mind that much dry rock down at the bottom. Yeah. But I want it to look like it's a disappearing waterfall. Right. So that's the magic. Well, and let's go take a look at some of the materials that are sure. underneath or the infrastructure behind this. Here are the basic components, Casey, okay. that we use in a disappearing waterfall. We'll so start, are these the boxes we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, these are the boxes okay. we're talking about. Let's start at the top, okay. though. Here's the weir. That's where the water comes out and runs over this edge down into the pond. So your pipe hooks yep. to the you side Yep, you hook a pipe in on the side here okay. on a fitting. Here's the pipe that we'd use, and it would come out, the water would even out on this and overflow and come down. That's one of the reasons you want a weir. Okay. If you just ran the tube up here, you'd have a two inch fire hose of water <laughs> squirting out. So we want it to look like a natural waterfall and come across this smooth part. And can you get those in different sizes? Yes, too, they with... come in four different sizes, okay. and we have two or three different models okay. that you can get to do different things with All if right. you choose to. All right, they would follow the pipe down. We've got the rubber liner on the ground. Uh -huh. It's all laid out. We follow the pipe down till we get down to the bottom. In the bottom are these boxes set up in whatever configuration we need to make the right amount of cubic feet of water. Okay. The next item we would put in the hole would be the pump vault. And the pump vault is really nothing more than a manhole. I was going to say, it kind of looks on. like a composting bin. That's right, <laughs> exactly. Very similar to that. But we're going to set a pump down in here and hook the pump up through this ho hole down, down to the pipe up to the waterfall. So now the water is comes in here through these slits in the side mm -hmm. and fills this up keeps the pump covered. That's why we've got to have three times as much water. And so this is next to your boxes? That's stuff, next to right? the boxes okay. down in the basin at okay. the bottom. But if I have to service my pump or I have to replace my pump, I can scrape those rocks aside that we hit it with down there, take the lid off, and I can reach my pump and get it out to uh, do service okay. work on it if okay. necessary. So that's, that's that part of it. One of the things we probably should mention at this point is the size of pump you need right. to run the size of waterfall you want. Many people ask, how come my waterfall doesn't look like yours? It's because ours are running at maximum capacity. For this 25 inch wide waterfall, I would recommend a pump that pumps 5,000 gallons at this point. Okay. That means against the pressure 
of the atmosphere pushing down on right. it. Right, and the numbers on pumps are sometimes misleading, I think, because you lose a lot of pressure depending yes, on the length of your waterfall and the height of it. I can think I bought a huge pump right. when it's really not big enough to do what I want it to do. Right. The, every manufacturer supplies a pump chart, and that chart shows you how much you lose against head pressure. Okay. So this pump that I put in here was 3,300 gallons an hour, but at five feet, it's only pumping 2,700 gallons an hour. At 10 feet, it's only pumping 1,800. So you significantly decreased so it right you, there. You yeah. really lose a lot of power in your pump by the height of your waterfall, the length of the pipe, and the number of fittings that you put in. So that definitely is how you get the roar, is to make sure you have the right size pump. That's right. If you want to have one inch of water come over the top edge of this, you have to run 200 gallons per hour per inch of width. Okay. So 25 inches wide times 200 is 5,000 gallons of water. If you want a quiet waterfall, you could get by with a half inch of water, 100 gallons per hour per inch, and have it just, just pump 2,500 gallons at this point. Okay. So this pump would work to make a quiet waterfall. Okay, all right. So is the pump the biggest price item that it will buy? To yes, get? yes it is. Okay. You're, you're gonna spend three or four hundred dollars for a good pump to run a waterfall of this size. Okay. The rest of it is probably only gonna to total up to about that much. Mm -hmm. So pump's about half your price excluding the rocks right right okay all right well thank you mike for sharing this information i love this and and i'm ready to play in the water <laughs> okay let's go we hope you enjoyed this video it's part of our oklahoma gardening youtube channel you can also find even more videos on our ok gardening classics youtube channel and join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.